From not being a fan of a certain color of sweet hinting at an iconic supervillain's fear, to a certain warning to others coming back to bite an antagonist on the ass later down the road. These big screen baddies knew what they didn't like but still couldn't save themselves from said horrifying fate all the same. The always terrified Gareth here from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 movie villains who foreshadow their biggest fears. Number 10. Ransom thought he was the only one to win against Harlan. Knives out. Chris Evans unexpectedly slimy turn as Hugh Ransom Drysdale in Ryan Johnson's brilliantly twisty whodunit by the name of Knives Out, comes equipped with a declaration much more significant than it initially seems. With Ransom's grandfather Harlan being seemingly killed early on, it soon becomes clear that the pair shared a particularly close, though often complicated, bond. With the two regularly playing the board game Go together, and the former apparently being the only person to beat his grandpaps. So when Ransom ultimately discovers that Harlan's faithful nurse Marta actually beat Harlan more than Ransom did at the game, his statement of I thought I was the only one who could beat him at Go hinted him not actually being as smart as he thought he was all along. In the end, Marta is actually able to outwit the hot-headed Ransom into confessing his murdering of Harlan in front of Benoit Blanc. Hammering home a fear Ransom had no doubt harbored from the second he realized Marta was better at Go than he was. Perhaps he wasn't actually the smartest person in the room all along. Number 9. Venom is scared of the red ones. Venom 2. Let there be carnage. Now sure, he may not technically sit as the out-and-out antagonist of his own Sony big screen stories, but with Venom acting as one of the most notable villains ever to grace Spider-Man's rogues gallery, he just about qualifies for the purposes of this list because it's my list, I'll do what I want. With that in mind, the impulsive symbiote makes it clear pretty early on in Venom's sequel Let There Be Carnage that he is particularly frightened of one specific brand of fellow ball of goo via his separating of his beloved chocolate. When chowing down on some M&Ms early on in the flick, a collection of red-colored versions of the sweets can be seen left out on the table, with Venom slash Eddie Brock refusing to go near them. As it goes, Venom is shown to be entirely spooked by what he brands as the Red Ones of his kind, seen in his first encounter with Carnage later on in the day. Clearly, Venom's deep-rooted fear of this type of symbiote has had quite the impact on his often unsettling eating habits. Number 8. Everyone's suicidal, including Harry in Bruges. The shocking death of Ray Fiennes Harry Waters in the outstanding Martin McDonough black comedy in Bruges was remarkably hinted at by the intimidating man himself on a number of occasions when seemingly letting his guard down a tad. Firstly, during an exchange earlier on with Brendan Gleeson's Ken Daly, Harry is quick to note one of his deepest, darkest fears by confessing that I'm suicidal, you're suicidal, everybody's effing suicidal, after being told that Colin Farrell's Ray is, you guessed it, suicidal. On top of this, Harry also remarks at one point in that chat, if I had killed a little kid, accidentally or otherwise, I wouldn't have thought twice I'd have killed myself on the spot. Sure enough, making his deepest fears a reality late in the day, after seemingly shooting a child in his pursuit of Ray, despite it not actually hitting a kid and merely Jimmy dressed as a child, Harry pulls the trigger on himself shortly after. Number 7. Hoskins notes how Blue's loyalty cannot be bought. Jurassic World In the unveiling of his grand plan to eventually utilize the once extinct beasties being housed in Jurassic World as biological weapons in the real world, Vincent D'Onofrio's Vic Hoskins seemed to hint at perhaps his only real fear when it came to setting this scheme into motion. As he puts it when discussing the potential game-changing velociraptors to Chris Pratt's dino wrangling Owen Grady, their loyalty cannot be bought. Unfortunately for Hoskins, that's something he'd eventually discover for himself in the flesh in the film's closing stages. When attempting to keep said dino weapon dream alive by gaining possession of a few more embryos, it's here when the despicable InGen head of security operations attempts to convince the incoming predator that they were both on the same side. Sure enough, remaining fiercely loyal to the person who'd helped raise her, Delta instead opted to attack Hoskins there and then, protecting Owen and the gang whilst killing the person she'd clearly wanted to chow down on for some time. Number 6. Elsa can't pass up the chance to grab the Holy Grail, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. For better or worse, some folks will simply stop at nothing to get the thing they want most in this world. And it was Alison Doody's Elsa Schneider's fear of not being able to gain possession of the sacred Holy Grail that drove her to stabbing her one-time lover Indiana Jones in the back throughout the runtime of The Last Crusade. But it was some rather specific words to one of the Jones men she seduced that eventually acted as a rather unsettling piece of foreshadowing for her eventual fate. As Elsa noted to a clearly disappointed Henry Jones Jr., don't look at me like that, we both wanted the Grail, I would have done anything to get it, you would have done the same. This, coupled with Indy's response of I'm sorry you think so, would eventually play into the film's climactic stages, with Elsa trying with all her might to grab hold of the grail despite it likely leading to her death. 
as she held onto Jones's hand above a recently made crevice. In the end, her glove would fatally slip from Indy's grasp as she tried to do anything to get the prize, with Jones instead letting it go as he alluded to earlier on. Number 5. Colonel Quaritch's Pandora Wildlife Warning Comes Back to Haunt Him Avatar Stephen Lang's Colonel Miles Quaritch wasted little time letting the troops in attendance, and folks watching Avatar at home know that out there beyond that fence, every living thing that crawls, flies, or squats in the mud wants to kill you and eat your eyes for jujubes. And while the fearsome military leader of the RDA very much gives off an air of unwavering determination for much of the runtime, this all plays into James Cameron's sci-fi monster's conclusion, as we see Awa unleash all of her natural fury on Quaritch and his forces late in the day, with everything from flying beasties to 10-ton hammerhead titanothairs trying to kill the RDA invaders. And Quaritch himself succumbs to a number of arrows from the native Navi, Neytiri, before all is said and done. But you simply cannot keep a good colonel down, it seems, with Quaritch being set for a return in this year's The Way of Water. Number 4. Ultron Creates the Thing He Dreads, Avengers Age of Ultron While he may not have acted as one of the most formidable or memorable forces of sheer evil to be unleashed on the MCU's set of Avengers to date, James Spader's Ultron did still boast a number of instantly quotable one-liners, likely due to the fact he was part created by the iconic dialogue-spewing Tony Stark. Away from his odd obsession with strings, though, the robotic wave of frightening artificial intelligence did actually allude to what would ultimately prove to be his downfall during one of his many moments of villainous monologuing. As the Age of Ultron baddie would note in that second Avengers team-up to the Maximoffs, everyone creates the thing they dread. And as it happens, that's precisely what Ultron himself would do, in the forging of Paul Bettany's very much worthy vision not long after this grand utterance. By the end of the flick, the latest addition to Earth's Mightiest Heroes would in fact be responsible for Ultron's demise. With Ultron's potential new body actually picking off the last iteration of the murder bot before the end credits could roll. Number 3. Anakin's Need to Dream of Padme Episode 2 Attack of the Clones George Lucas offered many a compelling prequel breadcrumb towards the eventual dark fate that would consume apparent chosen one Anakin Skywalker. But away from the numerous visual hints, Lucas also made a point of adding a few subtle touches of foreshadowing into the future Darth Vader's dialogue that would set the stage for the events that would prove to be the catalyst for his fateful fall. It's no secret that Anakin possessed a fear of losing his beloved Padme Amidala for much of his prequel existence. But what you may not have clocked is the fact that Anakin himself seemed to actually set his greatest fear into motion, with one unfortunate line early on in Attack of the Clones. Whilst conversing with his master, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Anakin declares, I'd much rather dream about Padme. And as would later become clear, Skywalker's dreams of his loved ones tended to have fatal results for the real-life focus, as seen in his mother eventually dying as she had done in said dreams. Skywalker would, of course, eventually get his wish, but said next bout of Padme visions brought him one step closer to perhaps his biggest fear becoming a reality. Number 2. Gordon Gecko Doesn't Want to Waste Time Wall Street An obsession with greed and needing to make a frankly absurd amount of money at all costs is always likely to come back to bite just about any cinematic antagonist on the ass before their big screen journey has come to its conclusion. And in Michael Douglas's enthralling Gordon Gecko, 1987's Wall Street perhaps came equipped with the very personification of greed. But there was actually a very human fear seemingly driving Gecko to take part in his illegal insider trading antics. As Gecko would explain to Charlie Sheen's Bud Fox when talking about the concept of hard work not being all it's cracked up to be, the relentless force would note, I'm talking about liquid, rich enough to have your own jet, rich enough not to waste time. However, in his efforts to earn enough cash through his nefarious insider training methods to not have to waste time, Gecko ultimately winds up being chucked in prison for his crimes. So despite earning more than his fair share of dollar via his greed, for lack of a better word, is good way of living, Gecko couldn't escape the inevitable torture of wasting time in a jail cell. Number 1. Harvey Dent Lives Long Enough to Become the Villain The Dark Knight It was arguably Aaron Eckhart's tragic turn as the unfortunate Harvey Dent that packed the most painful punch over the course of Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. His eventual fall into madness on the back of having to watch his beloved Rachel Dawes die in the Joker's flames was very much on the cards from the second Dent chose to sit down and converse with the Batman himself Bruce Wayne over dinner earlier in the flick, however. In said exchange with the apparent billionaire playboy and Rachel, Dent unashamedly presents arguably his greatest fear to the group for all to see. His fateful words of you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain would ultimately ring true as it goes. After being responsible for murdering a number of folks in his pursuit of fair justice, the eventual Two-Face lived long enough to go from the man capable of saving Gotham to no better than the rest of those dragging it into darkness before falling to his climactic death. And that's our list. Know of any other movie villains who foreshadow their biggest fears? Let us know all about them in the comment section right down below and do 
do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Also, if you like this kind of thing, then head on over to whatculture.com and make sure to click on some more awesome articles just like the one this video you are watching right now is based on. I have been Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you, as always, for clicking on this video today. I hope to see you very, very soon, but in the meantime, be good to yourself. Bye-bye.